Well, now, if you are a Kenyan and you manage to earn yourself 60,000 Kenyan shillings at the end of the month, I am telling you, guess what? Last time I shared with you a quite an amazing statistic that over 75% of Kenyans actually earn a salary of between 15,000 to 60,000. Now, there you are, you are earning 60 and above. Now, this is a video for you. And by the way, let me tell you one thing. By the end of this video, the information that I'm going to share with you is going to blow your mind and you would believe actually this is a thing that you've been missing, all right? I'm going to share with you the tips that you're supposed to utilize, use them so that you grow yourself to the next level, all right? So, let's get into the business all right but but before we do that allow me just to remind you one thing like this video and by the way if you don't want to miss any of my future good videos do this doesn't cost you anything it's free of charge down below there on your right there is a small button written subscribe hit that magical button like the video and as well turn that notification bell for that a whole youtube will notify you whenever i upload a new good video now let's get into the business now you get yourself sixty thousand at the end of the month and guess what First of all, the very first point that you're supposed to understand about your life is that you guys, you're very, very few. And guess what? You can actually leverage on this and do something at the end of the day. Can you imagine this? You're being in the same basket of somebody or with somebody who is earning 15,000. Can you imagine this? There is someone who is earning 15,000 at the end of the month. They have the family just like you. And there you are. You have the 60,000 at the end of the month. And you guys, you're still complaining. Yeah, I understand you may argue from the point of, hey, the needs are different which is very true. I'm not denying that. But the fact remains this. All those needs that you've actually amassed yourself, it is because of you amassing yourself. Probably you're funding your status and all those kind of things. So the very first point that you're supposed to understand that you guys, you're very, very few. And you can actually do that. See, when you're actually very few on the top there, you can actually take advantage of that and leverage your need and be able to grow yourself to the next level. Yeah, I know that one maybe has not yet sinked, but guess what? Let's move together so that you understand what exactly I mean. Now, the next point that you're supposed to do if you're earning this amount of money, you're supposed to be a shift of the mentality. You should have what we call a shift of conversation. Now, engage yourself in conversation with people who are talking about investment, people are talking about growth, development, and all those kind of things. Let me tell you one secret. You see, when you're in this category of guys who are earning 60000 and above, and you can manage to leave yourself below that amount of money, at, at least, see, I always talk about people saying, at least 20% of your salary, all right? Depends on how your tight the schedule is. By the way, we do have some guys who are actually do not even have more of the responsibilities, like they are not married and what have you. So, and they're earning this a humongous amount of money. So, what exactly do you do? You actually manage to live below your means. Let, let, me, let me tell you one secret and, and allow me to talk about this because it's quite sensitive. I know you are out there and perhaps you work in a corporate world. Maybe you are a banker, you are a HR, you are a teacher, you are whoever. And then you keep on funding your status. Funding your status simply means like, hey, you want to prove to people that you earn. You want to prove to people that you have money. Whenever you all go out there, you want to have a drink, maybe your friends and what have you, you want to prove them a point. Listen, one thing. One day it will come when you realize those guys never played actually any role in your life. What you're supposed to do is that leave on your lane, do the things that you find them appropriate and right for you, actually manage to survive under below your, your what you call your earnings so that at least you can salvage more. Because let me tell you one secret, with the arm, um, with a pay slip of 60,000 at the end of the month, a lot of you know companies and talk of banks and what have you, they're ready to give you money. You can be able to get, take a loan and be able to invest yourself in the future. But the problem is this, if you do not have the proper management skills, even if you get that loan, no matter how smart and good it is, then you're gonna get yourself into problems. So the point is this, live below your means, don't prove to anybody any points. I mean, can you imagine this, using your money to you know uh, prove to people whom you don't love that you have it and all those kind of things. So it's always good to be or to understand that, hey, don't have to prove a point. All right. So and engage yourself in conversation of guys who are talking about investment, people who are talking about, hey, you know what? Ah, there is a certain plot in Mlolonga that is being sold at around 300, 200 or something of sort. What can we do? You engage yourself, you circle yourself with the people who are either earning this amount of money or way more above this amount of money so that you grow your mentality. But if you hang around with people who are just showing you the mentality of consuming and what have you, they're going to get yourself into more problems than you know, uh, the good things. Now, the other thing that the part C is that never or avoid having what we call the consumer mentality. You see, this consumer mentality is where you have this in thinking of, hey, guess what? If I get the money at the end of the month, now this is the money to drink, this is the money to go make happy in and all those kind of things. I understand we are human beings and again, we aren't going to live here in this world like forever. 
but does, that doesn't mean that that short period of time that you're gonna be here, it should be like, you know, hell or something of sort. Then it means as much as you're actually going ahead and consuming your money, making yourself happy and all those kind of things, it's always good to find a delicate balance between those two things. Like you'll be able to save, you'll be able to invest and be able actually to have some a little bit of it to at least nice yourself. But when you overly feed one beast, that's the happiness. If you feed the beast of happiness for now, then rest assured, one day you're gonna get yourself into problems. But dear brothers and sisters, if you're watching this video, understand one thing. Corona taught us a very big lesson. And let me tell you one thing. If today you get fired, and I want to ask you, I want to ask you this question, and it's a rhetoric question, and keep it to yourself. If today you get fired, how long will you survive? How much have you set aside sort of an emergency fund that can sustain you before you get back on your feet? That's the question that you should always ask yourself. And again, this job that you actually got or the job that you got out there that you're being employed, is it an assurance that you're going to be earning that amount of money throughout the time? What if something happens and God forbid, what would you do? That's the question that you're supposed to be asking yourself. So the point is this, avoid having this consumer mentality. Every time you get your money is the time now you call your friends and tell them, hey, uh, in Kenya we said now I pay a form and what have you, going out there and drinking and what have you. The, the point is this, you should always make sure that, hey, before you go out there and satisfy your needs and consume your money, be able you have, must have saved a little bit out there and you already know that your future is actually secured. Whether you're married or you are not, Okay, that, that does not mean, you see, after all, you also need to take care of yourself. That's a fact, because people tend to consume their money in the mentality of, or with the belief like, hey, guess what? I don't have much of the responsibilities. Now it's high time to make myself happy. You know, when I get family, I would be able to do this. Why would you have that kind of a mentality? Why would you think of, from the point of, hey, why don't I invest this money so that at least even when I have family, I'll be able to even enjoy more with the partners and what have you. That, that's exactly how you view life, because... Avoid this consumer mentality. I have seen people being affected by this consumer mentality and they lose their money to a point whereby they even regret and ask themselves, wow, if I can be given the chance that I got before, then I can be able to do wonders. No, now, or right now is the best time to do the wonders that you're thinking about. By the way, I deny promise it's easy. No, it is, has never been easy. It requires dedication, sacrifice, and all those kind of things. And the point number four is that view this money as a tool to make more of it. And, and by the way, this is where we draw the line between the rich and the poor, all right? And I really hope this point will sink. See, whenever you give a rich money, they see money, let's say you give them a million bob. Whenever they see that a million bob, they don't view it from a point of, hey, guess what? I've been looking forward into having, uh, you know, uh, a kaka somewhere. I've been looking forward into, you know, getting myself a happy, you know, in the, in the coast or the whatever. No, what they think is like, okay, fine, have a million bob on my hand. Now, what can I do with this a million bob to at least make 200k out of it? Or maybe make 300k out of it? Or even double this amount of money? Or make three times of this amount of money? They view that as a tool. For example, I'll ask a very simple question. If today I tell you, I'm not, give, I'm not gonna give you anything, okay? I just tell you, hey, wake up, you have nothing in your pocket, go make me 2,000 and then come back. Probably you don't even know, you, actually even the, the, the means of getting yourself out of from where you are, it's actually a very tough thing to do. But if you wake up in the morning, I tell you, hey, guess what? I'm gonna give you these 10,000 Kenyan shillings and you just go out there, make 500 out of these 10,000 shillings. Probably you'll say yes. Why? Because you've already viewed that amount of money as a tool. And if you view money as a tool to make more of it, then a whole change of mentality will actually happen. Because if you view money as a product to be consumed rather than a tool to be used to make more of it, then it's going to be roughed on you. But once you view money as a tool to make more of it, and that's why they say, hey, why do rich be always become rich and poor become poor? Why? Because poor, whenever they see money, you know, whenever they see money, they view it like, okay, fine, this is a high time I get that what I've been missing. You know, guess what? I never wore my shop a very nice, I never I had a very nice shoe. You know, I never had a very nice suit. And what have you. They, they, they kind of develop the emotions about the money and the consumability and all those kind of things. So that's why they tend to consume that money towards that direction. But if you on the other side you give them money first of all and that's why you find most of these guys who used to be broke once they win these lotteries and what have you the very first thing they think of taking a vacation and going out there probably doing crazy things buying cars and all those kind of things why because the, to them money should give you the power to consume the power to acquire you see 
but to acquire wealth, to acquire the possibilities, things that are making you happy, to prove a point to their enemies. And that's why you find people are saying, hey, guess what? God dare bless me, I show these guys what I can be able to do. You know, they always think that I cannot be able to achieve something. That's a wrong way of viewing life. The point is this, once you get to money, view it as a tool. Now, this is the money that I have on my hands. Now, what exactly can I do with this money so that I can multiply this money, so that I can be able to put this money in a situation or a point whereby I can be able to be making more out of it. You see, let, 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 let me tell you a very simple example. Can you imagine this? You see, I always give this analogy. See, that money that you're earning, it's always the parent money. Once you plow it into the investment, what happens is that you don't lose that money. That money is still in existence on its own capacity of 60,000, but it's making you something out of it. Okay? It's making you like 1K, 2K, 800, 100, 300, whatever. So now you're consuming what it is being made by that 60,000. See, now that's a tool. That's like a machine that is making you Gs and making you money. That's how you view it. But now if you get the 60 Gs, you consume it, you eradicate the consumer, I mean you eradicate the parent money, then you got nothing that can give back. It's like you have like a, a how can I take it, like you have a pottery in your house. Yeah, you know, pottery like you have the cheeks and you have the, the crockers and whatever, okay? And then you eat all the cheeks that can actually give, uh, you know, lay eggs and, you know, give birth to cheeks and what have you. Whatever that means, you guys, you know what I try to mean. Now, what does it mean And you remain with the crockers and what have you? I mean, your generation of that specific animals is actually gone, is eradicated. So the point is you're supposed to actually view that money as a parent money that should help you be able to achieve more of it continually without actually affecting the base of your money. I really hope that that actually thing has actually sink. So view money as a tool to make more of it, not as a product to be consumed, to make yourself happy, to prove a point to your friends. And I wonder why people use a lot of money to prove to their friends whom they don't even know. Can you imagine this? Why would I consume like my 2 million, 3 million or 4 million, go out there and uh, it's quite, a, it's quite, you know, doesn't make any sense. All right. Now, the other point is this, uh, number five, with proper management, sacrifice and determination. Guess what will happen? This money will actually take you into higher heights. All what you need to have in this particular moment is to have yourself what you call the sacrifice. Remember one thing, I'm not a motivational speaker. I don't tell you the things that you love to hear. I always tell you the truth and I never promise easier things. What I always tell you is this, if you can engage management, very important term, management. Number two, sacrifice. Okay, and number three is the determination or the discipline in that and consistency of saying that. If you say I'm going to be setting aside 12,000 at the end of the month, out of my 60,000 because that's the 20%, at least 20% of my money. Then I do that continuously. See, what is making me to do so, it is because of discipline. I'm going to say, I said I'm going to set aside 12,000. You do so continuously. And then you do sacrifice. You sacrifice for you to be able to create that surplus of 20 or 12,000. 12, that is exactly how you do it. Then you do that continuously in a period of time. Then guess what will happen? You're going to get yourself you know, a more powerful tool to make more money, then you can be able to take that tool, apply it appropriately where it's, uh, you know, where you, you apply that tool where it's appropriate, where it can actually make you more money. And then therefore, you can be able to produce more money as you progress to the next level. That's a reality. So view this money as a tool. And again, make sure that you have yourself a budget. And I always tell people, make sure that at all the time you have your budget, even men, I always ask them, how much money does it consume in your family if you're married? They tell me, I do not know, but my wife is aware of this. You know, that's not a good way of viewing this thing. Always understand how much goes where, so that if you understand how much goes where. You see, the only people whom I allow them to not even think about how much goes where is when you've made plenty of money to a point whereby you don't even know where your kitchen is. You see, you can come to a point whereby you don't even know where your kitchen is. When I say you don't know where your kitchen is, literally I mean like, you see, uh, like you got your helpers out there, you have the house managers and what have you. You don't even know when the food are being bought and how much they are being bought because you're now focusing on much greater things. But if you haven't reached that particular point then you should actually wonder and mind how much is it going towards that specific area because at the end of the day if you disregard it these are the you know those are the holes that surely poke in your these are poked holes in your in your pockets that actually where money goes without you even actually monitoring and guess what will happen you always be you know uh, you know, raising voices to your wife and or your partner or whatever you're living with or maybe to yourself you're living single because you don't understand exactly how much goes where that is the way you're supposed to go if you're earning yourself that amount of money and above. 
and guess what that marks the end of my video but not the end of me posting a video each and every day if you don't want to miss a video make sure that you subscribe to this channel turn that notification bell and by the way you can always grab my number from the description of this specific video give me a call and we can have a conversation about money management skills investments businesses and all those kind of things or even grab my booklets about investments as well i have them ready all right so for now it's a goodbye but don't forget see you in the next one